Welcome to Lesson 4-H, the Buzanesque Approximation. This will be a very short lesson where we define and discuss the Buzanesque Approximation. Then we'll summarize how this approximation changes the mass, momentum, and energy equations. You can think of the Buzanesque Approximation as mildly compressible or nearly incompressible. It's valid for small changes in temperature. In particular, we let rho, the density, be a function of temperature in the gravity term, but constant everywhere else. This will be the key to the Buzanesque approximation. Let's talk about liquids and gases. For liquids, which we normally say are incompressible, we will allow for buoyancy due to temperature changes. For gases, we'll always assume an ideal gas at low Mach number which, as we discussed in a previous lesson, can be considered nearly incompressible, even though an ideal gas, by definition, is compressible. But at low Mach number, density changes are very small. In both of these cases, we'll assume that density is constant everywhere but in the gravity term, where it's a function of temperature. So for gases, we'll also allow for buoyancy due to temperature changes. Mathematically, in either case, we write rho equal rho naught times 1 minus alpha t minus t naught. This is the Buzanesque approximation, where rho naught is a reference density at t equal t naught, where t naught is a reference temperature. t naught can be some temperature in the flow, such as at a wall, or it can be the average temperature in the flow. But in all these cases, t minus t naught, which we'll call delta t, must be small. As you can see, this is a linear approximation for density. We also define alpha as the thermal expansion coefficient. I should mention that some authors use beta instead of alpha, and some people call this the coefficient of thermal expansion. By definition, alpha is minus 1 over rho, del rho del t, evaluated at constant pressure. This is our formal definition of alpha and alpha has dimensions of 1 over temperature. Alpha is constant in the Buzanesque approximation. But sir, why do you have negative signs in both of those equations? Well, Sean, think about it. When a gas or a liquid gets hotter, does its density go up or down? I think density would go down, sir. That's right. We all know that warm air rises, so density decreases with temperature. The negative sign is here to make alpha a positive quantity, and the negative sign is here to make density decrease when temperature increases. Yeah, thank you, sir. So as we stated, we'll use this equation for density in the gravity term, but we'll use rho equal rho naught everywhere else, and we'll approximate other coefficients like mu and nu as constants. Here's a summary of the Buzanesque approximation for our mass, momentum, and energy equations in Cartesian coordinates, and we make our typical assumption that z is up, so gravity acts down in the negative z direction. Continuity is the same as the incompressible version, since density doesn't even appear. X-momentum is also the same as the incompressible version, except that we have rho naught as the constant density. Same with Y-momentum. But the Z component of the Navier-Stokes equation includes the gravity term, and this is our expression for the non-constant density. Notice that we use constant density in the pressure term and constant nu in the viscous terms. Only in the gravity term do we use the variable density, and we use the linear Buzanesque approximation. Recall that for incompressible flow, temperature is not one of our variables, but here we do have to include temperature as one of the fundamental variables to be solved for. So we must also look at the heat equation or the energy equation. Again, we assume constants such as rho naught and Cp. These are evaluated at our reference temperature, T naught. But we use the otherwise incompressible version of the heat equation. But it turns out that the viscous dissipation term phi is negligibly small in the Buzanesque approximation. The same approximation we made for incompressible flow previously. So we'll ignore this term since phi is the same order of magnitude as other neglected terms when we make our approximations. So in summary, for a three-dimensional problem in Cartesian coordinates, 
we have u, v, and w, our velocity components, pressure, and temperature as our unknowns. That's five unknowns. And we see here that we have five equations, continuity, the three components of the Navier-Stokes equation, and the scalar energy equation. Thus, the problem is mathematically well posed. We'll use the Buzanesque approximation later in the course. Again, it's an approximation, but it's a good one when temperature changes are small, so that this linear approximation of density is a reasonable approximation. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.